Darren Friedman, sports medicine physician out of New York City. We're here today to discuss the latest addition to the Apollo portfolio, the I-90. I'm going to introduce the I-90 into the anterior rotator interval portal. And you can see due to the torpedo-shaped electrode, the ease of insertion in and out of the portal, in and out of the joint. This device also easily fits through a five millimeter cannula as well. As we look into the front of the joint, you can see the MGHL here, which is draped over the subscapularis. Due to the shape and the tapered electrode, it's very easy to get in between tissue planes that may be tight. And as we activate the device, it's easy to loosen up and release those adhesions anteriorly. And you can see how efficient this device is at releasing that tissue. So as we get even more medially on the subscap, you can see how effective the I-90 is at taking down that MGHL for a capsule release and getting in between tight tissue planes. As you look at the lateral bicipital sling here, or the medial bicipital sling, and if we wanted to taper that down, you can see the plasma activation affecting the tissue, taking down some of that redundant tissue. As we move more superiorly above the subscapularis, if you wanted to do a rotator interval release, due to the geometry of the electrode, it's very easy to work in the planes above the subscapularis and remove some tissue in this region if you're going to be performing a subscapularis repair or performing a release anteriorly. As we're working more medially on the subscapularis, you can see some medial adhesions here towards the medial aspect of the rotator interval getting towards the base of the coracoid. Once again, due to that anatomy and the, the design of the tip of this device, it easily navigates those tissue planes, allowing for a facile release of some of those adhesions as we work medially. And you can see we have a nice open release of that interval, complete excursion and mobilization of the subscapularis tendon. So introducing the I-90 into the joint, you can see the labrum here, some degeneration, degenerative labral tear. So to breed that, as I activate the device, you can see the plasma formation over the face and on the sides of the device. The plasma is really well contained with the I-90. And because of that well-contained plasma, you've got something called edge control, where if you just put the edge of the device against the target tissue, you get really focused, targeted treatment of that degenerated tissue. It's going to change my view. If you look more inferiorly, some degeneration down low as well. Once again, activating the device, you can see that target tissue react, taper down, and get smoothed out. When you look at the superior labrum, so it looks like the patient has degenerative slap tear. If we're going to debride, a little of that superior labrum here. Same technique, activate the device just off the tissue. You can see that plasma form, and as it contacts the target tissue, you see those macroscopic changes in the tissue. Moving on to the glenoid, some degenerative kind of grade two, three chondral changes. This device works well when treating chondral lesions for chondroplasty due to that well-contained plasma field. As the plasma contacts that disease cartilage, you can see some macroscopic changes in the cartilage, allowing for debridement and stabilization of the lesion. Once again, the anatomy and the geometry of this device is great. You can see on the tip, you get a really well-defined field of plasma, and that tip can just hover over that cartilage lesion, creating some changes in the tissue, debriding, removing the diseased tissue, but preserving the healthier tissue underneath. So it really allows for precision of use because of that well-contained plasma field. So if we look at the labrum now, generative tear is stabilized, fray tissue has been tapered, minimal impact on the surrounding tissue. And looking at the glenoid, we can see that the cartilage lesion is stabilized, less degenerative fray tissue after, after treatment with the, with the I-90. And lastly, looking at that rotator interval, we can see that subscapularis completely mobilized and released, interval released in preparation for any potential subscapularis repair or if you're doing any work underneath the, uh, the coracoid. So in preparation for a subpectoral biceps tenodesis, the I-90 is very efficient at completing the tenotomy in the joint. I usually start about one centimeter off the stump, the insertion, and let the I-90 do, do its work. Very clean, very efficient, quick tenotomy in preparation for a tenodesis. All right, so we've moved up to the subacromial space. Got a lateral portal. We're going to put our I-90 in there. You can see how easily that slides in with the torpedo-shaped electrode. Does not catch up on the tissue. And when I start my subacromial decompressions, I always start with the RF. It does a really good job of resecting tissue. 
this specimen does not have a significant amount of bursitis. I oftentimes will create a little bit of a window here in the deltoid fascia, which allows for ease of insertion of my other instruments if I'm going to be passing sutures through the rotator cuff. As we look medially, we can see some adipose on the undersurface of the acromion. So as we're doing our decompression and prep for a rotator cuff repair, you can see how efficient the I-90 is at resecting tissue, removing the tissue. It does a really nice job of releasing tissue off the acromion. If you look at the face of the device, there's three large aspiration ports. And the beauty of that is that there's a fair amount of aspiration as you activate the device, which does two things. Number one, it minimizes the amount of bubbles, which is great. It also really reduces the, the risk of clogging. As we work medially back to the acromial spine, you can see it just kind of peels off the tissue, allowing for mobilization on, of the brosal-sided fibers of that rotator cuff. Visualization is clear, minimal bubbles, very efficient at resecting excess tissue. In addition, the geometry in the tapered tip really allows for ease of passage medially, rarely gets held up or caught on tissue. As we move laterally, you can see some adhesions anteriorly, and sometimes in individuals will have large retracted rotator cuff tears. You want to do a complete mobilization, and you can see it does a really nice job of breaking through those tissue planes, freeing up that underlying rotator cuff. You can see here some of that deltoid fascia is adherent anteriorly. We're going to open that up and release, which will make it easier for us to perform a rotator cuff repair. And as we look laterally, as we're preparing our lateral gutter for a double row repair, Oftentimes, that deltoid fascia will be adherent to the bone laterally. And once again, the geometry of the I-90 allows for ease of insertion into the lateral gutter, rotate the device 90 degrees, and release some of those adhesions down by the inferior part of that footprint to allow for space and geometry and real estate to put our lateral row anchors in for a cuff repair. So plenty of space now after we've released that fascia in the lateral gutter. All right, so once again, viewing from the lateral side, instruments coming in posteriorly. We've completed our subacromial decompression. We've released back to the scapular spine. Our lateral gutter is released in preparation for our lateral row anchors. Essentially, the bone is ready for an acromioplasty if indicated. And I think in wrapping up, the beauty of this device is it's unbelievably efficient at removing tissue in a volumetric fashion, but it's also extremely precise due to that well-contained plasma field and the edge control. So this can be utilized when trying to resect tissue in the subacromial space and prep for a cuff repair or a chromioplasty, but it can also be used around sensitive tissue like cartilage or labrum due to that edge control and that pre precision on the edge of the I-90.